So my name is Doug Wilson. I work with the Southern Maine Agency on Aging. The uh, topic of today's Lunch and Learn is around um, falls prevention. So my job with the Southern, how many of you have heard of the Southern Maine Agency on Aging? Also known as SMA, wonderful. So my job at SMA is, I actually wear two hats. One is around our falls prevention program. And the second is that I actually get to be a resource coordinator for a um, independent living facility up in Falmouth. And I would invite you all to stop by if you're in Falmouth. Right now we're gonna talk about falls prevention. That's our topic today. I understand I have an hour. So I want to leave room for questions. If you have questions, if there's anything that I have covered that you want more information on, I'll be here after the talk so we can chat then as well. So our learning goals today, we're going to talk about falls in Maine and why this is an important topic. I'm going to give you a few statistics, not a lot, and it's not intended to be a scare tactic. I just want you to be aware. By the way, how many people in the room know somebody who has fallen within the last six months? Okay, we have the right audience. <clears throat> We're going to talk a little bit about your risks. What are the risks related to falls? And then we're going to talk about some action steps that you can take to help prevent falls. Some of the things that you can do to plan ahead in the event of a fall some of the activities that are important to you um, as you look at your overall health and the impact that falls may have on your health. So that's our goal today, falls in Maine. So you've heard the statistics that one in four older adults falls every year. If you looked around when I just asked the question, more than 25% of you raised your hands here. So this is a, fact of life, but it is not, necessar not necessarily in, uh, inevitable. It is not an obligatory part of aging. In fact, a lot of falls can be prevented, and that's why we're here to have this discussion today. <clears throat> One of the issues, and we'll talk about it, is that less than one-third of the older adults who fall talk to their primary care providers or their physicians about their falls. We know that one in, in every five fall results in a serious injury. So falls are the leading cause of injury among those of us over the age of 65, the leading cause of death for folks over the age of 85. Those are the statistics. The average cost of a fall nationwide is about $30,000. So this has a both uh, personal, emotional, and financial impact on us. So Maine, in the year 2017, two years ago, there were 21,722 older Mainers who ended up in emergency rooms in Maine with a falls-related injury. That's about 60 every day. So you're not alone. Let's talk about some of the things that we can be doing to remain independent and avoid falls wherever possible. So a couple of quick tips that we're gonna talk about. One is around medications. We're gonna talk about medications. We're gonna talk about how you know <clears throat> How do you get to know your medications? What medications tend to be a higher, cause a higher risk of falls? We're going to talk about a few quick tips in terms of knowing, not only knowing your medications, using the same pharmacy. Why would you use the same pharmacy? So they have a list of your medications. They know what medications you're taking. Keeping those medication lists current is very important. You want to be able to ask questions about your medications. When you are prescribed a medication, ask your primary care, ask your provider, will this impact my mobility? Will it cause, can it cause, can it increase my risk for falls? You also want to trust your body. If you're taking, for example, a new medication 
and it causes you to be a little bit dizzy or a little wobbly on your feet, you want to be able to communicate that with your providers. Very important. So there are some medications, and I have, by the way, some handouts. So before you leave today, grab these three handouts I left for you. The first one here is on medications. So medications that are linked to falls tend to be the ones that are psychoactive medications, anticonvulsants, antidepressants, antipsychotics, benzodiazepines, <laughs> opioids, and certain sedatives. These are our drugs. These are our medications that we know have an impact on your ability to maintain your balance and to prevent falls. There are also over-the-counter medications that you need to be aware of. So make sure you take a copy of this handout when you leave here. Antihistamines, for example, can uh, impact your, your balance and cause falls. There are certain medications that many of us take uh, that uh, impact our blood pressure. Changes in your blood pressure can also cause you to fall. So you want to have a plan in place related to your medications. You want to know the medications. You want to use the same pharmacy. You want to communicate with your physician. Some of the physical factors that we talk about with regard to falls and falls prevention. <clears throat> <clears throat> so neuropathy, for example, where you're losing some of the sensation often in your feet, can cause falls. Think about that if you're in the shower and you can't really feel your feet. Showers, by the way, uh, bathrooms are where an awful lot of falls occur. Uh, your flexibility, how flexible are you? How active are you? Do you have arthritis? Does it cause you to be less flexible? These are some of the things that uh, relate to the need for some physical activity. Uh, vision challenges can affect our ability, particularly related to balance, and can cause falls, as can our hearing impairment. So these are all things, it's not one set of factors, but a group of factors that come together that increase the risk of falling. So many of us have different issues going on with our bodies that we need to be aware of. We need to plan accordingly. We need to think about, for example, if, you're, if you have neuropathy and you're going to be in the shower, what are some things you can be doing in the way of home safety modification to help prevent a fall? We're going to talk a little bit about home safety. Do you feel like you can do activities safely in your home without being concerned about tripping or falling or losing your balance? I can tell you that when my wife and I, we did our little camp and made it our permanent retirement home, we put grab bars everywhere. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. They're simple to put up and they make a huge difference. <clears throat> So are there areas in your own home, if you think about it, that you were, wish were set up somewhat differently to be more convenient or safe? Bathrooms, laundry rooms, high shelving, cupboards that you can't quite reach without getting on a ladder, entryways are also common areas that can benefit from small modifications that can have a big make a big difference in terms of your falls prevention and make it easier to use. So there's always something that you can do to prevent falls. Let's talk about these things. The physical, first one around physical activity. You want to maintain an independent, active lifestyle. You need to think, obviously, about being uh, physically active. It's a huge, essential component to being able to maintain your independence is to think about the physical activities that might be appropriate for you. <clears throat> These are your habits. 
Do you get out and walk routinely? Probably not this time of year as much, unless it's an indoor walking environment. So is walking part of your everyday habit? Um, have you been to a balanced workshop? Have you educated yourself around what some of the activities you can do, physical activities that you can do to prevent falls? Do you have a regular physical activity routine? So we'll talk about some of those workshops, like a matter of balance workshop, which some of you may have been, are already familiar with. Tai Chi for health and balance. By the way, I'm certified to teach both the standing and the seated Tai Chi for arthritis program, Tai Chi for health and balance. So if we have time today, I'll give you a demonstration of the Tai Chi program. You might even consider working with a physical therapist to find those exercises that would be most impactful for you if you have a fear of falling or have fallen in the past. <clears throat> what are some of the choices that you make in your everyday life that might impact your ability to prevent falls? Do you use a cane? Do you have other assistive devices? Have you put up grab bars in your house? Are there two sets of railings in your stairwell going up, up the stairs? Do you routinely carry your laundry down to the basement, holding on to the basket of laundry? So these are choices that you make. Exercise, footwear, using assisted devices. Often falls occur when we are rushing. We may have other risky behaviors. If we've mixed, for example, medications with any sort of alcohol use, that's a, a, a huge increase in uh, risk for falls. I mentioned at the beginning that um, one in five falls results in a serious injury. I also mentioned that most of us are reluctant or have been reluctant in the past to talk to our healthcare providers about falls. The fear is that if we admit that we've fallen, it's an automatic entry to uh, losing our independence. I have to tell you that's not true anymore. So within the past few years, the changes in the way medicine has been practiced for preventative services require your healthcare provider to ask you the question. How many of you have been to your doctor recently and had to fill out a form that said, have you fallen? This is a good time to have a communication with your providers. If they're not aware that you have fallen or that you have a fear of falling, they can't help you. But if they are aware of it and you have an honest conversation with your providers, you have a much better chance of making sure medication is taken care of if you need some physical therapy to get some exercises that will help you with your falls. If you have your provider's concurrence to get into some physical activities that will help you prevent falls. So communication with your family and your doctors and within your community is very important. You really have to advocate for yourself with this. This is not something others are going to advocate for you. So home safety. Home safety is very, very important. There are simple solutions. As I mentioned, the grab bars my wife and I put up in our house. Very important, easy to do. You can ask for help. Ask your family for help. Ask your neighbors for help. Ask the neighborhood network that you have here in York for help in getting some simple home modifications, railings put up on the stairs, grab bars put up. And by the way, grab bars, I don't mean the, the towel bar that's across the seat from the toilet. <laughs> or the shower curtain rod. <laughs> These don't qualify as grab bars. In fact, you've just increased your risk of a serious fall if you're gonna grab hold of that shower curtain. There are resources in your medical community through your occupational therapy services that can provide assessments in your home, usually at no cost. 
that can help you understand what some things you could do, what are some things you could do in your home. Some of the most common trip hazards in your home, what do you think? Rugs. What about rugs? Rugs are great, they'll keep your feet warm. So taping down the corner of your throw rugs could be one very easy way, or getting rid of them, could be a very easy way. How many of you have extension cords in your house? Are those extension cords taped to the side of the wall, or do they run out in the middle of the room? <laughs> middle of the room. Do you think that's a risk for falling? <laughs> 21,722 Mainers over the age of 65 ended up in the emergency room in 2017 with a falls-related injury. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of us, 60 a day. So, Oh, by the way, about 75% of those folks went home. So the great opportunity when you're leaving the emergency room to be thinking about, probably a little too late, but to be thinking about what you need to modify in your home to avoid another trip to the emergency room. There are also a growing body of certified aging in place specialists. I'll be honest with you, we had to educate our contractor you know, these door handles that are often used in universal design so that you don't have a knob. You just have a handle here. He put all of ours in upside down. <laughs> he did. I had to go through and change every one of them and put them the right way. So you may have to educate your, your, your contractor if you're doing home modifications. But it is a growing body of knowledge. And there are certified aging in place specialists that you can locate who can come in and do the proper installation of things that will help you prevent falls. I have another handout, the second one here. I want you to take with you, check for safety. <clears throat> A home fall prevention checklist for older adults. I want you to take this home with you and go through it carefully. It's going to ask you questions about clutter. Are there papers, shoes, books, or other objects on the stairs? Stairs, as you well uh, know, are, are often a very significant falls risk. Are there some of the steps in your stairs? Maybe the ones going outside, they haven't been repaired. They're loose, uneven. Is there a light switch? in your home at the top of the stairs and the bottom of the stairs? If not, these are relatively easy fixes, OK? Um, maybe the light bulb over your stairs burned out and you haven't gotten around to fixing it. Good opportunity to ask a family member or a friend to come do that. So lighting is incredibly important. We talked about carpet. Uh, is the carpet, is your Stairwell carpeted, well, is that carpet loose? Is it torn? Make sure that the carpet is firmly secured to your stairs. Handrails. The facility I'm working up in, I mentioned up in Falmouth, br brand new renovation of a 1930s, it was the original Falmouth High School, beautiful building on the historic registry. <clears throat> First day I got there, I went to go on the stairs that lead down to our common room. The railing was loose. Make sure that your railings and your stairwell are secure. And by the way, I'll show you a picture in a minute. I want you to point out to me what's wrong with the, with the picture. Hold that thought. Floors, when you walk through a room, do you have to walk around furniture? Do you have throw rugs? Are there papers, shoes, books, and other objects on the floor? Do you have to walk around or over wires? I mentioned cords, telephone wires, extension cords. In the kitchen, do you often have stuff that you keep high on a shelf? Can you bring those things down so you don't have to climb on a ladder to get them? I was the tallest in my family. When I would come home to visit my mom and dad, my mom would say, Douglas, honey, can you reach up to that shelf? 
Do you use a step stool? And if so, is it sturdy? And does it have a place to uh, grab hold of? In your bedroom, is there a light near the bed? If you have to get up in the middle of the night, most of us do. Do you have a light you can turn on so you're not walking in the dark? Okay. Bathrooms, is the tub or shower floor slippery? You can put non-slippery, non-slip rubber mats or self-sticking strips on the floor, the tub, the shower. Do you need some support when you get in, out of the, in or out of the tub or up from the toilet? That's where the grab bars come handy, not towel bars. So take one of these with you, please, and fill it out when you get home. So planning ahead is also very important. One in four adults falls every year, older adults falls every year. So what are you going to do if a fall happens? <clears throat> they are not, as we said, an obligatory part of aging, but they do happen. So with some mindfulness and some planning, know what to do if you've fallen. Do you have access to your phone? Do you have, do you wear, do you have access to a medical alert or a personal emergency response button? By the way, if you do and you don't want to wear it, what I recommend to my residents up in Falmouth, they have two of them in each unit, put one in the bathroom. That's where a lot of falls occur. Put one in the kitchen or close to it so you know how to access it if you have a fall. <clears throat> So staying upright, active, and independent, very, very important. OK, quiz. What's wrong with this picture? Only one railing. Only one railing. This is a treacherous set of stairs. The treads on the very top here are about this narrow. It's curving. And there's only, thank you, one, one railing. So. We put two railings on every stairwell in our house, even the ones we don't really use a lot, the ones that go to a guest bedroom. How many of you have laundry facilities in your basement? Do you carry the laundry down in a basket? We were at a training uh, what, a couple weeks ago. One of the ideas that came up for a program, by the way, I'll talk about in a minute, Healthy Steps for Older Adults program. <clears throat> Great idea. Throw the laundry down. Use both railings in both hands as you go down the stairs. When you're finished, just small piles. When you come back up, take many trips. It's good exercise. So those are some great ideas. What other ideas have you had about preventing falls in your home? Any thoughts? Don't move. My laundry, I made a pillowcase this big with a string. I stand on top, fill it with my dirty laundry, throw it down the stairs, and when it is all done, fill it back up again, pick up the string, and I pull it right back up. Perfect. Perfect solution. I love that one. Did you all hear that? Yes. So loading up a, a pillowcase, or even sometimes those... Uh, you know, the L.L. Bean canvas bags have big handles on them. Using that to, take, to throw the laundry down, and then when you go to bring it back up, you have a pulley system. So you're pulling it on a string. <laughs> Brilliant. What else? Any other ideas? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have the grab bars in our shower. Yes. And they say to test it every time before you get in. Absolutely. Test it before you get out, because I had come loose while I was showering, and I didn't know it when I grabbed for it. The bottom was totally undone, and it had been fine going in. That's a great point. Grab bars are perfect if they're installed properly. So when we did our bathroom, we made sure they put what they call blocking behind the wall so that, those, that the hardware that holds, the screws that hold that grab bar go directly into the blocking. You can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get grab bars that are actually suction cups that stick on. Those you want to be very careful. You test out every time. Somebody told me that if you get the ones that have suction, use them with epoxy. Epoxy, <laughs> suction, they never come. 
Great point. You're not going to be moving them around. You're going to put them where you need them, so you might as well epoxy them to the wall. Yeah. Uh, if you don't use epoxy, what you should do is, every time you get out of the shower, take them down, so then when you get in the shower, you put them back on again, and you test them, and you know that they're working well. Another great idea. Did you hear that? So if you're using the kind that stick on, take them off when you're done, put them back on before you get back in the shower. Yes? What I used to do with the laundry, I throw the whole shooting match downstairs, but when I came, I carry it up in a basket, but I would reach up as far as I could, put the laundry basket on the step, walk up. Another great idea. So you have control over this and you can manage your falls risk. There are some other activities that we talked about in terms of physical activities and, and programs. So York Hospital in concert with SMA does two matter of balance classes every year. These are six or eight week uh, classes that you attend two, two hours or so a week. These are particularly important and this is a national program particularly important for people who have a fear of falling, maybe have fallen. The matter of balance classes that you go to will not only, how many of you have taken matter of balance? Did you find these to be useful? So they help you get over the fear of falling. They help you understand what to do when you've fallen, but they also give you some exercises, minor exercises. This is not an exercise class but some minor exercises that can help you build some of the muscle strength you need to prevent fall. How about uh, Tai Chi? So Tai Chi for arthritis or Tai Chi for health and balance is also like matter of balance, an evidence-based program <clears throat> has proven to be very effective for people who have some mobility issues or some arthritis or simply want to make sure they maintain the proper strength and flexibility to prevent falls. The particular program that we offer at SMA is, as I said, evidence-based. We are grant funded, therefore it has to be evidence-based. We don't have a choice in that. It's a terrific program for understanding exactly what sorts of movements makes sense for you in terms of slow, continuous movements. No heavy dipping, no major exercise. We don't believe in no pain, no gain. So I would encourage you to look at Tai Chi classes. <clears throat> we have a new program that we are beginning. In fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we will be offering one in Kittery on March the 26th. 26th. This is actually, unlike the matter of balance, which goes over six or eight weeks, this is a one day program. It incorporates both um, a falls risk assessment, so you know what your risks are. It includes a uh, discussion about falls and about some of the things we've talked about today. And it also includes some, again, exercise programs you can do at home. So we're excited to be rolling this out. It's a new program. We've just been trained on it. By the way, SMA uses, okay, I'm gonna put in a plug here. Uh, about 85% of our workshops in our AgeWell programs at SMA are led by volunteers. So I happen to be on staff. This is my encore career and I love every minute of it, but we rely on volunteers to help. So we train you as a volunteer in the Matter Balance program, in the Tai Chi program, in this new program called Healthy Steps for Older Adults. And you begin to be an asset within your community in coaching others through these programs. So I put that plug out there for you to think about it. We're always looking for volunteers to work with us and work with the York Hospital in providing some of these balance and falls prevention workshops. Can I put in a plug too? Please. We need more volunteers in Southern Maine. That is absolutely I'm true. I'm alone down here at the moment. <laughs> absolutely true. So the last handout that I have for you to take with you covers what we've just been talking about. 
Number one, finding a good balance or exercise program. Number two, talk with your health care provider. Number three, regularly review your medications with your doctor and your pharmacist. Number four, check your vision and hearing. Get them checked annually and update your eyeglasses. How many of you have had new prescription glasses and found them uh, takes a few weeks to get used to the, the new prescription? That's a fall waiting to happen, isn't it? Fall accident waiting to happen. Keep your home, number five, keep your home safe. As we've talked about, home modifications can be done inexpensively. There are minor things you can do within your own home. There are programs through neighborhood network and other community-based organizations that can help you with minor home modifications to make your home safer. And number six, talk with your family members. We need to get past this notion that if we admit we've fallen, it's an automatic ticket to losing our independence. That is not true. Questions? What was the name of that program on the 26th of March? So the, the program starting in Kittery on the 26th of March is called Healthy Steps for Older Adults. H-S-O-A, if you want the, the acronym. Where is it? Uh, good question, Jean. It's on Rogers Road. And it's in the old, um, the old school. He, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The old school that they redid into a community center. A little bit past the Dairy Queen. The Rogers Road, a little bit past the Dairy Queen and the Tropic Circle. We can talk afterwards and get Jeff, exactly directions. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I just want to pass on. One of the worst falls I ever had was when I was taking my dog out. I'm sorry? One of the worst falls I ever had was when I was mm -hmm. taking my dog out to the garage. I had the habit of pulling the leash. Yes. And I lost my balance. And I stuff. Right. So that's kind of easy way from that. Well, pets, pets are also obviously a, a fall risk, not just what you've described when they take off after that squirrel and pull you along, but also just in the home. So being aware of where the pet is before you take that step. One of the things we do in our Tai Chi program, one of the basic, basic principles of our Tai Chi program, I'll come up front. So I promised a little demonstration of Tai Chi. So this particular Tai Chi form, and there are three or four major forms. This one is, is a style called Sun style, S-U-N. It is based on principles of, first of all, weight shifting. So being very conscious of your weight shift, particularly before you take a step. By the way, here's a tip. When you walk, and I want you to try this when you leave here, put your heel down first and then your toe. I call it the Tai Chi walk. <laughs> Heel first and then toe, why? You often catch your toe on that rug or that stump or that branch or whatever it is, that rock. So learn how to step with your heel first and then your toe. So balance shifting is hugely important. If you see me in the grocery store waiting in line and I'm doing this, don't be alarmed. <laughs> Don't be alarmed. I'm just exercising those muscles that help me keep my balance and my posture. So slow and continuous movement is part of the Tai Chi program. Part of that is not only that you don't want to be doing fast movements. It's also connecting the mind and the body. And it's paying attention to your posture. So. <clears throat> this is one form. This is one form in the Tai Chi that we teach called open and close. Open, close. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Even I could learn that one. <laughs> so another form is called uh, single whip. Notice the slow, continuous movement and the balance shift. By the time I've shifted my weight over here, by the way, I'm famous. Did you know that? Have you ever, did anybody see the 207 main 
um, program, you know, the 207 main that Channel 6 does? They did a segment on our Tai Chi. I had my 15 minutes of fame, actually 30 minutes of fame because we ran it again. <laughs> so if you're interested, go up and look at it. It's still online. It's, uh, go, go to 207 minutes. So, so when I do this, when I do this, look at my, my shoulders over my hip, which is over my knees. I'm balanced. And I'm doing a very slow, continuous movement. So these are some of the exercises we learn in Tai Chi. You'll also learn some of the similar exercises that help build some of the muscle strength that you need to prevent falls in either the Matter of Balance class or the Healthy Steps for Older Adults class. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I have problems walking, so I'm always looking down. Right. And I can't, I'm still be trying to stand up, but to look, you know, to have good balance and but you can't because you're always looking down and especially when it's winter time and icy one of the well so two two comments um looking down is a concern you're trying to see where your feet are by the way uh looking at the statistics i mentioned 21,722 older adults in 2017 the rate you would expect that the rate of falls would be increased in the winter months it's not true. It's even across, pretty much even, 25% across all four quarters. In fact, if you're a female over the age of 85, you have a one in three chance of falling and ending up in the emergency room, except in the wintertime. <laughs> That's it. We don't go out. So we're Mainers. We're smart. We don't go out in the wintertime. So I run into this actually in teaching my Tai Chi class, not so much looking down, but trying to look at the instructor while also doing you know, a form and they're turning their heads this way. So, so it's an issue. I would encourage you to, again, try the idea of heel and then toe. That way you're not having to look down all the time because once you've planted your heel down there and you've done your weight shift, you know you're safe. So try that. The more you can keep an upright posture and keep your spine aligned, the less chance you're going to have a falling over. Other questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. Isn't dehydration a good cause of falling? Dehydration is a cause of a lot of issues, but yes. Um, you want to make sure you drink plenty of water. You want to keep your muscles and you want to keep yourself active. You need to drink water. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to go back to the extension cord. Yes. The floor. I solved the problem with putting, when I have to put it in a more dangerous area, I put fluorescent tape on different spots, and when you put the light on, you can see it right away. Brilliant. Put it next to the wall, <coughs> yeah, you can see the fluorescent. It works like a shower. I'm paint. hoping whoever invented fluorescent tape is a billionaire by now. <laughs> no, really, it makes a huge difference. Sometimes putting a little fluorescent tape on the on your stairs, the first stair, the top stair, so you know when you've arrived because you can see the steps. What else? Yes, ma'am. I do go out in the winter. What's the best way to walk on ice? <laughs> if you have to walk on ice, it's sort of like it's not ideal to walk on ice. But if you know you have to walk on ice, there are some things you can do. But the thing I was going to say, and it may relate to this, I don't know whether said this came in. Sorry, speak up for me. Is when you're going across an area carefully, you're making it all the way across, and you're almost at your destination, there's a tendency to raise your head up to see where you're going, and this is changing from this, right. and then you go out that way, because right. just that change of your head is changing your balance if what you're standing on is not. So a couple of things that I've heard about are the cleats that go on your boots that have spikes, for ice, poles like they use for snowshoeing or cross-country skiing. Right. So another trick: a little container in your car of kitty litter or sand. 
You get out and you look and it's an ice skating rink, like my driveway is. I, never, I talked to the architect. I said, I never saw that in the plans. <laughs> no, I didn't. It was not in the plan for our house we build. There was nothing about an ice skating rink when I got out of my car. And yet every winter for the last five winters, by the way, I now know why you Mainers leave Maine in March. <laughs> I was snow blowing my neighbor's yard, uh, his driveway, last March after that third nor'easter. And I went, wait a minute. He's my plow guy. <laughs> oh, right, I forgot. He's in Hawaii. Yeah, right. So a little container of sand or a kitty litter. Kitty litter is way too messy. Well, you, you, Okay, so you make choices here. You make choices. My wife takes a little uh, piece of that when she goes. She goes. She works at the library, and, and sometimes the town doesn't, not here. I'm sure it's perfect here, but where she works sometimes in Bath, they, they don't necessarily get the parking lot cleared properly. So she takes some of the sand that I use in my driveway and sprinkles it out front. Okay? Does that help? Well, I usually try to walk flat-footed as opposed to the heel-toe. Right. So, so in, on ice, the heel-toe might not work very well. So walk like a penguin. I'd like to respond to her because, like, if I'm going shopping, I don't take my walker. I dual cane. And in the winter, I have spikes. Spikes. <laughs> and I put them in the shopping cart. Yep. You know, so, you know, it's, it's not that it can't be done. It's very convenient, actually. Did, did you hear that? <clears throat> Shorten your stride when you walk. Say so, again? Shorten the stride. So uh -huh. I take really long steps uh -huh. normally, which puts me out of, it makes me balance through half of the stride. So if I shorten my stride, I can do the weight shift. So, so back to that whole idea of shifting your weight, being conscious of the weight. When we teach it in Tai Chi, we talk about, think about this leg is full of water or sand and it's coming up here and going down to your other leg. Consciously think about that weight shift before you step. Weight shift, weight shift. Yes, sir. And also dropping your hip, your pelvis a little bit and having some balance in that. I love the idea of the sand going from one leg, one to, leg the to the other. Yeah. And you're keeping that weight directly over it. You're not pushing off anywhere so you're on the other one. You move the foot in the air and then put your weight on it and then move the other one. But hopefully you get spikes and ice crawlers and stuff. Yeah, ice, ice we know is a problem. And that's why the rate of falls for older women in Maine goes down in, this, in the fall. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the winter. I had, uh, just recently I read that if you walk uh, more like a question mark, if it's, if it's slippery, walk bent over a little bit and, and don't try to walk straight up and, and full stride because you can't do both. You can't walk straight up and the posture people try to look good, I guess. But um, it's better to be a, look a little awkward bent over than to, I think that's... What I can tell you is in our Tai Chi program, we talk about the alignment of your shoulders over your hips, over your knees. We also, by the way, when we teach Tai Chi, teach it with what we call soft joints. So slight bend in our knees. That helps with the balance as well. So you'll notice when I'm doing any of my Tai Chi stances, I've got my knees are slightly bent. Leaning over is probably not a great idea because that's where you're going to lose, lose your balance. Others. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you asked if anybody had had a fall recently, I, I didn't raise my hand. Then I realized I did have a fall. I fell going to the doctor's office. <laughs> I was using one of the aluminum walkers, and the back legs have discs, and it caught right under the rug as you went from far from up. And I, and I do have one other comment. Uh, I've been using, so somebody else gave me another kind of walker to use, so I, I appreciate that. But um, when I've been using a walker for a year, and when I was first started using a walker, our sons built me a beautiful ramp. And I, I felt a little bad. I almost felt like there was a sign that said, a little old lady lives here. Right. But then I realized they built it with so much love, I appreciate it. Yeah. 
So it's clearly a challenge for us as we age to get over the idea that there's a stigma attached to using a cane or assisted device. We have to make, as we talked about, choices. So the choice is, do you want to fall and be one of those statistics I mentioned and end up in the emergency room? By the way, not to put you on the spot, but did you tell your doctor? Oh, I told them. Good. <laughs> and then, like, the next time I went, I was the person who fell. Good. Thank you for doing that. And I know not why they put tennis balls on the rear leg. Right. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. So far, you've been talking about people that maybe have full use of their feet. Right. You have a neuropathy. Mm -hmm. It's, all, it's a different ball game. It is. It is. Totally. So, so what are some? So we talked about neuropathy, for example, in the shower is a huge issue, because you really can't feel your feet. And by the way, you've probably used some soap, and it might be slippery. So you don't even have that sensation that you're going to slip in the shower. So what have you learned? Are there ways that you can compensate well, for the neuropathy? I have neuropathy, which resulted from spine surgery. Okay. So I find that. My neuropathy is more in the toe area, uh -huh. so I would use the heel. Using the heel. Anything that's not affected. Plus, in the shower, slow. Slow. Hold the grab bag, ground bar. The grab bars. Grab bar and so forth. And also have a seat <coughs> in the shower. You cannot stand up in the shower unless you're holding on to a grab bar. So I don't know if you heard him in the back. Slow. Be aware of your movements, slow movements. You said that you have a, a seat in the shower. I have a bench that goes over the, over the uh, tub. So a bench that goes over the side of the tub so you can swing over. And what was the third thing you said? I don't remember. <laughs> Grab bar. Grab bar. Very important. Yes, ma'am. Another thing is, to, if you have a hand shower, to yes. make sure that you spray the bottom of the shower and get rid of the soap. <laughs> Great idea. So if you have a, a way to, to clean the soap off the bottom of your shower, especially if you have a handheld, but even if you have a regular shower head. Yes, ma'am. Well, if you can't sit down in the shower, um, the doctor get, will assign you one of those boots to wear and you can wash them and everything, and they're rubber on the bottom and canvas, and they're short, they're no big deal. So obviously talking with your healthcare providers becomes really important because they may have, I've never heard of that, that's a great idea. It's a great idea. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, why do you need banisters on both sides of your stairway? So I, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna admit it, I fell off a ladder Broke a rib, broke, you know, injured my ankle. When you're climbing a, a ladder, and I'll come back to your question. When you're climbing a ladder, the rule of thumb is what? Anybody done some construction work? Three points. So either two hands and a foot or two feet and a hand, okay? So think about going up those stairs that I showed you here. How are you going to get three points if you have one handrail here and you got a, a tread that's you know that big? You can maybe get your toe on it. So now you've got two points. You're going to lift your foot, and you're going to fall down the stairs. So having a second set of handrails makes a huge difference in being able to use both hands as you go down or upstairs. But I have learned that it's uh good for me to go down sideways if your foot doesn't fit, if the stair isn't wide enough, especially in my high heels. <laughs> That's the best example of self-management I've heard all day. Nicely done. Uh, stairs that are not carpeted, that are hardwood stairs and, and, and socks. Don't walk barefoot. For those of you who have a cane that also likes to skate on the ice and snow, there is a little gizmo you can buy at health places or maybe hardware stores to slip up onto the cane and there's a flip switch that brings the little prongs 
that holds you on the ice. And it gives you the tremendous balance. So did you hear that? There are adaptive devices you can put on your cane that gives you a spike to go in the ice. My wife, yep, thank you. My wife has it as well. She uses the spiked one when she goes out in the ice. Yes, sir. My best, my best uh, suggestion for ice is to get somebody to walk with you. So you got to break down your pride and ask somebody. Fabulous idea. Did you hear that in the back? A great idea. When you get out of your car and you're looking at ice and you're worried you're going to fall, ask for help. Ask for help. There's nothing wrong with asking somebody, oh, can you, can you? We are a generation that needs to look after ourselves. That's a great example of getting over the stigma of, oh, I have to have help. Well, you have to have help, fine. The alternative is you end up being one of my statistics in the emergency room. Is that 27,000 number just Maine? Just Maine, just older adults in Maine, and doesn't even include those from away who come here and fall. <laughs> Can I say something too, please? Yes, sir. Because uh, I come here every day to the library. Yep. Right? Um, I have found, this is only my experience, but I have found that when I'm going in and out the doors or down the stairs or what, if there are young people or other people there, invariably they ask, can they help me? Yep. Can they help me? Yep. I had one case where my mother was coming in with her two little kids, and she said to her son, Help the young man, or help the man, didn't say young, help the man open up the door. And immediately his little sister came by, and I said to the young boy, I said, thank you for helping me. And his little sister piped up and said, well, I helped too. <laughs> so asking for help is not a bad thing. Yes, sir. You've uh, concentrated mostly on not falling. Right. Now, what good words have you for us? But if we're falling, then what? There are times when you're going to fall. And so my, my quick answer is take a matter of balance class or our healthy steps for older adults, because we're going to go through that in detail. We're going to talk about what happens when you fall, what are some tips and techniques on how you get back up, what are some proper ways to fall. So. So I can't, in the five minutes we have left, give you the right advice here, but I would encourage you to think about the Matter of Balance class, Healthy Steps for Older Adults class. Okay? Yes? I promised my kids, but I don't want to wear one of those stubborn. I have to wear this. I go down the cellar, I put this up, stuff it in here, and I go downstairs, if I fall. I have my cell phone on a string. Or, sure. you can pay, or if you can make something and put it on your belt, it is more convenient. How many of you have cell phones? This, this one fantastic. You can push it right out of here, and I would call 911 when I go downstairs. Great idea. So, have a way to, to carry your cell phone, either in a pouch or in a pocket. And another thing, but uh, <laughs> hang on, folks. Okay, so we're right up at the time, whoops, sorry, that I uh, promised. <clears throat> Again, I would encourage you to come take one of these as you leave. Take the checklist home with you. And remember the six tips that we covered about falls prevention. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat>